This is another update. Andrew Morrow in Portland, Oregon, facing 25 to life for defending myself against my roommate who had jumped me with his girlfriend, pulled a, what looked to be a pistol out on me. Uh, neighbors told me go away. I ran back into my apartment, tried to hide. I had to get weapons to defend myself because I did not want to die curled up in a ball. Um, let's start from the beginning. When I asked him to not have his girlfriend over so much, it felt like she lived there. They were constantly bickering and arguing, and I'm just not a part of that. I didn't want any domestic violence at my house. I didn't know at the time that his previous roommate had actually called the cops on him four times for that same reason, domestic violence, and he finally was attacked for asking him not to have his girlfriend over. I know a lot of people have said that, you know, this email that I brought up between uh, his father coming into the district attorney's office didn't prove anything. They said, you know, what's an email? But I just wanted to read to you guys really what was said because it says that they met with his father on Monday morning, December 19th in a conference room. The conversation was not recorded. Uh, they did not have an investigator present to take notes because they expected it to be fairly routine meeting with the victim's uh, parent. They were wrong, they said, I was wrong. His father wanted me to know that his son, Jemiah, had a history of violent outbursts and had been diagnosed with intermediate explosive disorder. He explained that his son had been in and out of the criminal justice system throughout his teenage years. He said that Jemiah had a pattern of not getting along with roommates and that Jemiah's girlfriend was often at the center of the conflict. He said that Jemiah was not permitted to live in the family home because of his violent outbursts. He described several specific incidents that had occurred over the years. He said that his son would fly into rage and essentially black out. I've asked the detectives to reach out to his dad and interview to memorialize this and report. So I'm hoping to get, if they did go to his father and, and get that report, I'm hoping to get that. Um, I'm very disappointed that my case was even being brought up to stay on trial for the simple fact is that this man had an MO. He constantly would destroy someone's home, assault them, and the criminal justice system kept letting him get away with it. When he attacked me, and I was holding his hands and he bit my thumbnail off, I never let go. I still was holding his wrist to prevent him from hitting me. I was telling his girlfriend to call the authorities and she refused. She um, held, held me down with him. That's when he bashed me in the top of the head, gave me four stitches on the top of the head. I want everyone to see really what happened to me because when you just see me today, you think, oh, you know, thumb was bit off. Can't tell. Well, it, it happened and it was real. Um, after he bit my thumbnail off, they held me down while he hit me. I pulled her on top of me and I said, I told you he was going to hurt me if I let him go. That's whenever he destroyed my computer, he ran outside came back and kicked the door in. That's when he hit me with the slap from the door. It's it's hard for me to even speak of the, the trauma that I experienced. I was so scared in that moment. I ran out after he pointed the gun at me to the neighbor's home. I banged on their door. I really would love to show everyone the ring doorbell footage. When he, egg, they told me go away. So when he exited my apartment, I ran back in there to, to hide. Fearing for my life, I didn't feel like there was nowhere to hide. I didn't want to die curled up in a ball. So I armed myself. And when he came back in and he kicked that door in, I had to defend myself. I told him, go away, and he tackled me. And that's whenever I ended the threat, and I didn't know what else to do. This man, when he mentioned rage, I've never seen that before in my life. Like, there was no emotion in his eyes. He, he looked like he was in a trance whenever I was put in handcuffs I told them I said he was either on drugs or he was possessed um, if you guys find it in your heart give send go drumo d-r-e-w m-o-w um, I wouldn't hurt a fly I didn't want to 
hurt anyone. I've lost everything. I lost my apartment that I had for seven years that I tried to open up to someone to be kind, to be friendly, to help him elevate himself, to, to get off of his, you know, to get on his feet, to get off of, you know, renting a room and get his own place. And I even mentioned that him and his girlfriend could get their own place that I would help and search for that. So just thank you for your time.